Okay, so we're not too far off with this model now. Um, we've made some pretty good progress. Um, now we're going to focus on this roof section here. Um, and at the moment we've got a flat roof, uh, so we need this sort of bit that dips down to kind of show that you might be able to like walk around in there. So what we're going to do is get our main sort of facility building bit here. I'm going to go to Polygon and select the whole entire roof polygon. Okay. Now I can see that I need to create this uh, ledge around the side. So we're going to move on to a new tool we're going to use. And the next one is called Inset. Okay. So if you select Inset, um, we can click and drag. And you can see it's insetting that polygon, essentially. Okay, there we go. Turn that off when we're finished. Um, you can see when you've got these edges that come to the top here, it creates the, that, you know, that continues on, which is fine for now. Um, but what we now want to do is extrude inwards. We've used extrude before, so we'll extrude inwards again. And it comes in, I don't know, about that far. Okay, and right click when we finished. All right, so now straight away we've got that detailed, all oh, that detailing with the the ledge on the roof. Cool. Um, so we've got some three little components on the roof which we can make. Um, first of which um, is this one just looks a bit like a box. So again, um, by the way, so when you've got an object selected and you're say you're inside the sort of subcategories. So let's say I'm in polygon mode of this um, object. Um, I then cannot click and select any other objects. Okay, I can't click on one of my steps, look, because I'm stuck within the subcategories here. So if I wanted to select one of those steps, I need to click editable poly up here at the top, the top level. Then I can come out of it and select something else or deselect entirely. Okay, um, something that a lot of people get stuck in. All right, so just bear that in mind. Right, go back to create, go to box. Now, what I want to do is create a box on top of this one. So if I was to click and create a box here, actually, it's made it back here, which isn't where I want it. OK, so there's another feature here, um, which you may have seen called auto grid. All right, so tick that on. And what you'll notice is that the gizmo kind of follows around the surface of the model. Um, so now when I click and drag up here, it creates the box on the surface that I want it to. Okay. About that kind of size. Move it into place. Cool. Okay, I might make it a bit higher. Right. Um, just remember with auto grid, it does stay on once you've used it. So if you're going to create something where you don't want auto grid happening, <laughs> remember to turn it off the next time. Right. So with this box, um, it's kind of, you can just about see it's got these kind of circular um, kind of sections on there. Um, so what I want to do to create that um is probably make it from a cylinder so if i go to create again go to cylinder rather than trying to like cut a circle into this shape you can just add a cylinder on top so with auto grid on again create the cylinder on top of here not very high only about that high okay hopefully you can see what i'm referring to up here look um, I don't need all of those segments there. So height segments down to one. And what I need to do is to add some detail into that. So I'm going to convert the cylinder into an editable poly. Go to polygon. And I'm going to use inset. Like that. Um, sorry, extrude. Straight down a bit. Inset again. Extrude up. Inset again. 
and extrude down. Okay, and then right click. So I've made this kind of uh, little detail, these almost like two little rings uh, on top of this uh, object here. Okay, so if I then make them all the same color, uh, it kind of blends in nicely. All right, it's a nice bit of detailing on the top there. Um, actually going to show you one uh, more tool here. So what you can actually probably see is around a lot of the edges, they're kind of, uh, they're not as angular as what we've got. So if you did want to sort of almost smooth any edges off, um, then you need to do this. So you need to convert it to an editable poly. Go to an edge. So say these edges here. If I hold down to the control key to select multiple edges, I can use this tool called chamfer. Okay, now chamfer you're going to want to use the settings for. Um, you can see straight away what it's done is it has literally it has chamfered the corner, um, and then you can kind of play with these settings to how much you want that to be chamfered. See what's happening there. Um, and also you could add in more edges to determine how rounded you might want that. All right, I'm just going to add in maybe a couple like that. That'll do. Okay, so it just rounds off um, the edges there. Okay, you could have done it to the top as well. So if I actually undo and select all those top ones as well, and go to chamfer, that's remembered what I just did last time. And you can see it rounded off everything. All right, so you can add detailing that way. I'm not going to add it onto the whole building. I don't think it necessarily needs it, but this little bit can have it on top here. Okay, next bit. Um, this kind of antenna thing um, looks like it starts with a box. Mm, yep, that's fine. So again, get a box. Auto grid can stay on because I'm building up here. Um, can start like that. I want it to be a cube, so uh, six by six by six is fine. Convert it to an editable poly, which we do most of the time, because most of the time we need to edit something. It's rare that something just stays like a box. Um, and this time, um, I can use another tool um, called Bevel. All right, so Bevel is much like it's extrude. So if I click and drag, it just does what extrude does. But you'll notice that when I let go, it then offers the chance to, um, well, be beveled. <laughs> All right, so I just want it to go in like that. Okay, then we can swap back to our normal extrude and extrude up. That's fine. Maybe it needs to be a bit thinner actually. Sometimes you end up undoing and redoing things quite a lot until it's how you like it, which is fine. Uh, looks about right. I'm going to bevel again because this time I want it to come outwards and then extrude again. Okay, so we've kind of created this antenna thing. Let's keep things uniform with the same color. Very nice. Um, and then we'll create, um, in fact, we'll save the last bit for the last video. But what I also wanted to add in here is, um, you know, we can't, in here we can see these shadows and things, what's going on. But in here, we, at the moment we have no shadows. They're just kind of turned off. If I change this option here from standard to high quality, then we do get some shadows. See that? Um, this makes things look a bit nicer. But you know, it doesn't look great still. So what we want to do is to make sure things are looking how we want them, we're going to add in some lights. Okay, now, um, if you come over to create over here, I'll see we're used to just using these standard primitives. 
but if you go across you can see there's a little light bulb all right so that's where the lights are um, by default you get these photometric lights we don't want to use those we just want to use standard lights okay we're not going to do anything too fancy we're just going to add in two lights here okay um, at the moment I'm just going to show you how to add them I'm not going to go into detail about what they're doing for now all right but if you add in a skylight click to add it um, and you can see it's kind of like a half circle just put it above your model somewhere around the middle doesn't have to be perfect um, that's fine um, and then you want to come with it selected to the modify tab and then make sure it's casting shadows okay and does take a, a while you see what happened there so at first if I'm moving something around look I can't see any shadows if I stop doing anything it takes a second to calculate those shadows and then they fall into place and it looks a lot nicer you can actually come in here as well and also turn off the edged faces and we can start to see what our building is starting to look like in terms of the shadows as well um, which is great now what we want though um, is just a source that might be like uh, for the sun which we're going to use an omni light which is right next to skylight again so just click and position that where you would imagine um, the sun to be <laughs> so i imagine the sun to be coming down from on the side of it something like that and again go to modify and turn on shadows all right again it takes a second to process and there you can see the shadows are all looking great so you can see the shadows from that light are just casting across the top looks great all right so now you can see that your model is starting to to take shape starting to look quite nice with a little bit of lighting in there um, we just need to finish it off now okay